Um, Steve, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, what you get up to. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm Stephen. <laughs> um, I'm uh, a man, <laughs> obviously. Um, I grew up in Braunton in North Devon, which is a small little village, um, quite close to Croydon and Woolacoon. Kind of central, really. Um, I'm 35. And um, yeah, I've sort of grown up in the local area and grown up sort of surfing and playing music and sort of hanging out with lots of recubates like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I think it's going to become very evident really quickly that <laughs> big part of your personality is that you have Tourette's. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> so I think it would be like almost ignorant to, to ignore that just from a kind of like topical point of view. So yeah. just tell us a little bit about your Tourette. So when did you <laughs> when did you discover it? Or when were you diagnosed? Um, yeah, so basically I, I found out I had it when I was like about seven or eight years old. But it wasn't really diagnosed until I was about 11. And it was quite a mission to get diagnosed because the doctors didn't really, you know, they were just sending me away all the time saying that it wasn't really that. It was just a twitch, you'll grow out of it sort of thing. And then um, finally, like, the trap started getting really, really fucking look that way, you cunt. It started getting really um, bad when I was about sort of 10, 11, when you start going into puberty. And that's when my mum started really noticing it and was like, OK, this isn't right, you're calling children cunts. Um, they're not liking it. <laughs> did you notice it though? I know that sounds stupid, but did you? So you kept you saying then that people kept kind of basically turning you away and going, "You'll grow out of it. It's nothing." But were you aware of kind of how yeah, right. serious it, it kind of was? I think when I was about seven or eight, I just had little ticks like nuff, nip, bleh, you know, little little twitches, and then um, everyone noticed them, but I suppressed it quite a lot, which made me quite stressed. So that when I got home, it all just let out loads, and that's when my mum started noticing it more. Hey, oh, sorry. And then um, and then it started getting like to a point where I started saying sentences and stuff like that, and then I was just like, okay, this is quite a problem and then like my mum and dad sort of split up when I was about 12 when I went to secondary school and then it all started getting like really bad yeah. and that's when the doctor sort of diagnosed me with Tourette syndrome and then I was just like proper flat out then for like it was just constant for about three years till I was about 14 it just didn't stop yeah and then uh so school was quite difficult and uh kids were quite cruel and made a lot of friends but like it's also a lot of people didn't really know how to take it so yeah, it's quite I was going to say, I, I kind of met you maybe like during our 20s, I reckon, kind of in the, the Woolacoo and Croyd scene. And everyone that I know who knows you is very fond of you. So it's hard for me to kind of process that, you know, people were horrible to you. But I yeah, guess right. in, in secondary school, people are still kind of, I don't know, <laughs> figuring out who they are as yeah, well. Right, so yeah. I don't know, it's quite... A, Kids can be pretty brutal, can't they? Yeah. Kids like are one, of the things, one of the things I love about kids <laughs> is the complete lack of any film. Like, yeah. I love that. We've talked about my kids and stuff in the past, but at the same time, between kids, having no filter can be pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, people just say what they think when they think <laughs> it. Um, and also, it's like a battle school, isn't it? Like popularity contests and stuff. So oh, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. Kids trying to get one up on each other and things. But yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm. I. 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 I'm probably like the majority of people are quite ignorant to Tourette's. People yeah. see Tourette's as being pussy. Something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe <laughs> pussy. Dude. People see Tourette's as being something. I guess that is. Like that, we, we we know what it looks like from yeah. the outside in, but what what causes it? What is what is different about you to to others that means that you you have the ticks and you have the the symptoms and ultimately you have Tourette's? And is there anything else that it that it causes other than what we all see? Yeah. Okay. It's a good question. Yeah. So it's basically. It's a neurological dysfunction in the brain, so like, so all the messages that you'd normally get are sort of blocked. So that's what makes me have these ticks, and then I get these things called motor ticks, which are like the big ones, you know, like the 
Fuck. Ah! You know, like, oh, hello. He's here. <laughs> He's in the room. But yeah, it's um, it's basically a pathway that's just sort of like not quite, the, it's not set up properly in, in your brain and it causes these ticks. So basically, like, obviously, like you said, like the visible ones, like, and there's also ones like that, you know, they're inside your body, like, you just tense and you sort of like spasm and stuff like that. And then, and then obviously, you get like the, the, the big twitches and then you get the vocal ones. So it's quite um, it's quite full on, but then like it's also quite misunderstood because with sort of Tourette's in in the cells, everyone just thinks oh, I'd love to have Tourette's because you just go oh cunt fuck it off and say what you think. Yeah. You don't actually think that like, yeah. like, like but then I would see a fat person, <laughs> not like yourself. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. <laughs> and then, well, not like you, not like anyone. <laughs> just chill. Let's all be friends. And um. And then, <laughs> And then, like, I have said, like, run, piggy, run, you know, like, some, someone's, like, a fat person's going for a run. So it does, it's a very misunderstood thing where, you know, I could shout, oh, cunt, and then, but, like, a lot of people, like, you know, especially in the pub scene, because it's, like, everyone's a bit anxious anyway, mm. and then I'm in there, you know, and then I'm shouting shit about them, and it's not really about them, but then, if it's true, and then their boyfriend gets a bit, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, that has happened as well, so... Kind of, it's quite a kind of fine line, but everyone like said that like, you know you grew up with me, and like everyone that knows me really well has sort of turned a blind eye to it really, which is the best thing about North Devon because everyone moans about being a small place, but it's also helped me through a lot of you know my mental health and side of things with Tourette's, like because everyone's so supportive. You know what I, mean? I was going to say, yeah, I think you you bat it off quite well in the terms that it's it it kind of forms per, part of your personality. So when people will hear the name Steve Lay. For, it's kind of like two or three things pop into the mind it's kind of musician Tourette's kind of sex North Devon lad <laughs> and number four sex pass um, but that's so for us as kind of like friends or people that know you I think it's almost yeah. like it's oh, a it's fun so. thing yeah, I, I don't know if fun thing is the right word to say but for us, it's, it's like a, it's, it's almost like a a novelty I, that's the word I was looking for a novelty so for yeah, you right. That the novelty must wear off at times, you know what I mean? So, yeah, right, yeah. how's that kind of impacted on you being around friendship groups as you've grown up? You know, have you got to the point where you're like, I just fucking had enough, like, I don't want to be the novelty in the room or in the pub or whatever? Like, how's that been for you? Yeah, I guess, I mean, being in the public eye has been one thing that's been quite difficult because obviously I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of surfing and compete surfing as well, which is like c quite great because it's all my mates in the same place. But then when you go traveling or like when I'm on stage in front of like thousands of people, like say like the Gold Coast or you know, mm -hmm. doing gigs like when I did the X Factor and stuff like that, I'm walking on the stage in front of like, you know, four or five thousand people mm -hmm. who've never seen me before. And I'm literally just like, Give us a gun. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> but no, it's just like you know, you just it, it, it. Sometimes it just shuts off, but then sometimes it goes fucking ape shit. And then like obviously I'm, I'm I've got my guitar, I've got a microphone, and then I'm behind it, and then I'm like shit. Now I've got Tourette's, and I'm really nervous. This is going to be quite interesting. So I kind of adapted a way of learning how to you know. But a lot of people sort of say, oh, you play on it because it's not a scene, it's like, well, I don't play on it, I just adapt my personality to, so basically every time I track, I get something in my personality that makes me want to cover it up. Mm -hmm. So I'd go, cunt, and then I'd be like, oh, fuck, no, do 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 you know, like, trying to take the attention away from Tourette's, and that's where people think that I play on it, because I, my personality is quite intense as well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like getting this balance, so like when I was younger, I was just finding that balance, and then like now it's obviously like, a bit like kind of mastered it but it's also kind of quite like it makes you feel quite quite weird and it's it's a lot of pressure and it makes you very tired so my brain's just constantly racing all the time because I've got the anxiety about what people are going to think looking at me twitching and then I've obviously got the my inner self saying you know it's going to be all right just carry on and do it and then I've got the nerves and then I've got the you know the tiredness of it and the anxiety of all that so it's quite a whirlwind of thoughts, really. But then once you master it, and it's kind of like, I just loved being on stage. So that, that was kind of, I've always, I don't know if you could say I like being, most of my friends probably think that I like being centre of attention. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think like anyone does, you know what I mean? But like, I think it just takes away that part of Tourette's where if I can make people laugh, that, you know, that that's a real good thing. And I think that's why like, people think, 
because I make fun of myself and I take don't take it too seriously. You know, I think that's why people sort of warm to it and you know, you know, made quite a lot of friends and, and yeah, you know, it makes just makes you feel better, yeah. which is sick. How how does that? And, and this might be a really simple question and answer, but how does the the concept of you singing and playing music prevent you from not Tourette'ing? Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then even then, like we we asked you a question and it seemed like you were fully zoned in on answering it so the Tourette's yeah, right. kind of reduced a little bit because you were focused and stimulated yeah. I was just going to say the same and I guess it's, it's, it's <coughs> I guess it's when, you've, oh, when you've got a trail of thought or like with surfing there's so many yeah, different right. things going on that you've got to be thinking about yeah. there's almost no scope or capacity for anything yeah. else if performing is singing and playing the guitar or keyboard and, and then when yeah when you're just in a flow and you're thinking about the next few words rather than waiting for what the next turn to talk is, I suppose. Yeah, well, it's like a, it's, it is literally like a switch, so I'd be like, I call it like, I call it like full concentration, basically. I don't even know the name, actual term for it. But your mind's got like different parts of it that are kind of, you know, when you're like reading a book and you can like quite easily get distracted, can't you? And you're like, oh, what was that? Or, you know, like, but like when, when you're on a, say, for example, you're on a wave, you know, you're paddling into that wave, but before, prior to that, I'd be sat there literally just going fucking ape shit. Just like, ah, good, I'm so excited, I don't know how to feel, like, I nearly chat to your mates, and I'm calling everyone a cunt from over the other side of the water, and it's all like, oh, right, Steve? And then as soon as like, I catch the wave, I'm just gone, do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm in another world, like, I don't, I don't have Tourette's. And, I think I've only tracked myself off a couple of waves in my life and a couple of my mates have actually seen me do it. I think Ed Knight's seen me do it and he fucking, they just, they just piss themselves, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's funny. Mm -hmm. It's like, you could have made that section, you dickhead, and you know, <laughs> twitch yourself off. But like, you know, people have said they've heard me in the sea and stuff from like, you know, on the beach and shit. So it, it's, it's quite a, a weird concept, but like, it's obviously steering back to the point, like, I kind of drift quite a lot, sorry. But it's like, you get like, say like when you're in the middle of actually singing so before you'd be like ah and you take a deep breath and kind of then you're just gone then, and then that, you, has it crept up when you've been performing it, yeah so it's still it's still kind of a kind it's of never a hundred percent and that's why i've always i think there's gigs where i've done when everyone's come up to me and said jesus christ i've never seen you so calm and that's great because that means i'm in the zone but then there's obviously you never know what's going on in, in your fat niggas dick spunk and <laughs> I just had the DVLA like send me this huge letter about it as well, like you know, because like some copper dodged me in because someone pulled me over and you know they said that my car was going all over the road, but I had a legitimate excuse because you know the the tracking was out and I was getting a new van and it was all buggered and you know people are just hypersense at the moment. But he he sent it off to the DVLA and needed questioning and they questioned my whole driving license. So you know it's quite it can be quite sort of like if I'm really bad I probably wouldn't drive. Because I wouldn't want to risk it, but like generally, it's usually you know when I'm mid concentration, like I can hold the wheel of a car. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I've driven to the south of France on my own two or three times, and you know with Will Bailey and that as well. Like you know, and it's if you've got someone to chat to, like you just crack on. Like it doesn't really affect you know like. like I was going to say, I think when people, <laughs> yeah, when people hear the word Tourette's and they they kind of make a an assumption of what it is, it's it's they just make the assumption that it's swear words, <laughs> yeah, loud, but. Like, what else has kind of happened during your life which has been an obstacle because of threats? So you just mentioned then about the drive and stuff. Has there been anything else which has been just a, a fucking challenge to get over in comparison to someone that hasn't got Tourette's? Well, I guess, yeah, the, the, main, the main thing that I've been going through the last three years, which is the, probably the, 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 horror, the hardest thing that's fucked my mental health up. Um, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> is um, my spine. So basically, I haven't been able to surf for two years, and um, I don't know if you've known any of this. But, yeah. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll come on to it, how I kind of, okay. how, I, how I know about it in a minute, but yeah, you crack on. Yeah, well, basically, like, I, I had a summer where I was really bad and depressed, and I was, you know, going down the wrong path and stuff because of that. Cause, well, basically, like, what, what happened was that I started um, getting weakness in my right arm. And my mate just looked at me and said, oh, what, you know, what, what the fuck's going on with your elbow? Like, it's like basically no meat on it at all. Like, and yeah. We were just both just like, that's really odd. And I was like, it has been a little bit weak. I just thought, because I, I do a lot of plastering and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I thought it was just a plastering injury because mm. you're always up like that. And, mm. you know, I thought, because I had a bad sort of shoulder. 
but it was, you know, that my vertebrae had been pinched like a, you know, a narrowing in my spine, which was cutting off my, my nerves to my arm. So basically I had like no weight in my arm and it was really weak, but that was just all it was. And then, you know, I could keep surfing and, you know, I kept going on, but it was getting quite, quite difficult to surf because I was like dipping and I was kind of like lopsided. And then over time, it um, sort of went into my other side and into my legs. And I think that's the main thing that, you know, like a lot of people don't realise about Tourette's. It's like the constant bashing my neck back and forward, mm. like all the time. It's basically what it's done is it's counteracted, you know, it's like, it's like a, a hinge and it's just, it's just been rubbing on the spinal cord. So it's got inflamed and the spinal cord's got bruised. So the bruising's caused a lot of symptoms in my body. Like I've got this stuff called clonus in my left foot, which when you put pressure on it, your muscle just spasms. So it's got no... It's, it doesn't hurt, it just has a reflex on it like that that just doesn't do anything. So when I found the surfing, like I can't, can't get up properly and when I'm up, my leg just shakes and I can't really get any power. Yeah. So that's basically got me really depressed and then um, I nearly had to have an operation last year. <coughs> so that was quite heavy and then um, basically, I just took it upon myself to think, right, I, you know, the doctor said that I might never be able to surf again and that was just a big shock. And then basically my, my right arm was just so wasted away that, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> I thought that, um, I, I basically, like they said, it, it could get so bad that I would lose full function of it. Yeah. So then I was like, so I got referred to a neurologist in London and um, that was the turning point really because I realised how bad, you know, my spine was into a point where basically they said, all the doctors in North Devon, there was no neurologists in North Devon really at all. Yeah. And the ones that were here weren't, weren't qualified enough in that area. So I went to a proper Tourette's clinic sort of thing with a professor of Tourette's in, in, in Great Ormond Street. And they've dealt with a lot of cases and they, they offered me like this thing called DBS, which is deep brain stimulation, which means they put a little electrode in your top of your skull and it goes into your skull so it's, it's open brain surgery mm. and then they run the wire down the back of your skull down the back of your neck into a little pacemaker in your in, in your chest and they can turn up the frequencies and basically it, it, it you find the right setting and it stops your ticks so that pathway that i was talking about earlier in my brain is that basically that operation would give me back that you know that message and signal to my brain so that when i go to tick it would fire up that that mm. little mechanism so it's an amazing thing but it was forty thousand pounds but they offered to fund it so if i'm still in that decision whether i want it now but they said because i'm stabilizing and um basically i took it upon myself to work really really hard because all i want to do is get back in the water and um basically like my right arm just fully coming back now i've got like full like strongest it's been in four years yeah baby <laughs> and uh no nah, just from literally swimming and get like you know just living a healthier lifestyle and i think that because i was depressed i was going in a spiral of you know drugs and alcohol and you know partying and you know staying up late missing meals getting heavily depressed it's just a spiral of shit basically so before you start your arm started to <coughs> rehabilitate had you made a decision <laughs> had you decided that that's what you were going to do or you were still kind of weighing up, I'm not sure. Like, what, with the training and stuff? Yeah. And getting it better, yeah. Well, I was basically thinking, like, how do I feel? I was like, I need to change my lifestyle, number one, because that isn't helping. It's not the cause, but it's not helping what mm. I'm doing. So that, that was, you know, getting my mental health to a point where I can get, you know, looking after myself. But because I hated my body and I hated myself and I lost loads of weight, basically I was like 10, 10.3 stone, I think it was. So I'm 13 now, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I basically I was, you know, I was really, really sit, slim. But a lot of that was muscle wasted from my back. So my whole back fell off. And then because I wasn't surfing, I lost even more strength and power. Yeah. So basically I just looked really different. So someone had seen me for two years, they literally looked at me and said, what have you been on? I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you know, that's basically, you know, I'm not ashamed to say it. You know, we've all had problems and, you know, I've had a bit of a drug addiction and, you know, it wasn't bad, bad, but it was bad enough to really hurt, you know, the progress and the, what I wanted to do. So basically, you know, kind of got out of that situation, went to France and, you know, tried to turn my life around. 
and um, that's when I came back from France it started going into my leg so that means that that I could always live with my arm because I've got two and that was actually getting stronger but then it went into my legs so that mean I couldn't skate anymore and I couldn't surf properly and that's been the main problem now so I've started running on Thornton Beach and you know doing like just four four k yeah and that's really strengthening up my left leg and that's really helped like a lot to be in a progress now where in, in about a month's time I should be back in the water so it's amazing <laughs> yeah it's, it's 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 getting there but it's got a lot of work because it's like building muscle from you know because I haven't done anything either it's just fucked <laughs> so you, you sorry but so you mentioned there about um kind of your mental health took a bit of a nosedive yeah how and who were the did you have any kind of people that supported you through that so friends family girlfriends whoever it may have been at the time well I had a girlfriend and I went to Australia and then I my visa ran out so I came back and that's where I spiraled out of control really because I came back and was you know trying to keep my head straight and go on and then I, I moved into a place on my own and then <laughs> Yeah, I just spiralled out of control, basically. Just got really low and depressed and <laughs> couldn't really see a future in anything I did. I wasn't really playing much music. And then music was never... That was always the thing I kept doing, but uh, I'd stop surfing and... <clears throat> I think, yeah, yeah but I was just doing loads of drugs and, <clears throat> you know, drinking a lot and, you know, missing meals. And then I started getting really bad. <sighs> And then, um, you know, it just, it all just spiraled. It was basically like a spiral effect, really, I called it. And then and there, was, there was people around, but I just shut everyone out. And, you know, my mum didn't know anything at the time about anything. And, you know, and I was just like think, feeling that like I was hanging around with, you know, some of the wrong crowd probably as well. That didn't help. But everyone seemed to be on a right downer that year. And it just, everyone kind of just got into doing a lot of this and that. And, you know, what it's like, you know, yeah. and then... It just got really bad, and then that's when I noticed, you know, I needed to make a change, and then that's when, when I got got myself out of the situation, and, and I told my mum everything, and then, boom, that was really really difficult. But you know, but none of the stuff that I was doing was good for my Tourette's and me as a person, and I lost you know a hell of a lot of weight, and kind of didn't, I just didn't wasn't myself. I was, yeah. Everyone was like, where the fuck Steve gone? Like, yeah. yeah I, was, I was just moody, aggressive, and weird, and. Yeah, it just wasn't myself at all. Like. Was there a specific day, <coughs> time, turning point that you look back to to go, <coughs> right, this has got to change? <coughs> well, that's when, yeah, I got suicidal, basically, like, um, really bad, about three years ago, to a point where, like, a couple of times that I, I thought I was going to do it. Um, well, I, I wouldn't say I, I tried to do it, do you know what I mean? You know, I just got, did way too much stuff and, and, and basically did another one knowing that because of the state I was in and I was getting these brain palpitations as well it was my body was under a lot of pressure and then basically I was I was so I just didn't want to be here anymore at all and that was when I was like fuck and then I woke up I didn't know if I was going to wake up because I was basically like just bleeding you know it's just one of those situations it's not mm. just a big night out it's like you know you are killing yourself like and you, you don't want to be here anymore it's just a matter of days really so that's when I said, right, I need to tell my mum. So I told my mum and then I moved back in with her for like three months and sort of sorted my shit out. And it's like, I don't really tell many people about it really because everyone's, you know, it's like, right, everyone sort of knew that I was on a bit of a, a mad one. But I think a lot of people get confused about like what I had to deal with. And like, you know, I just hated Tourette's. I hated myself. I hated the fact that my spine was fucked. I hated the fact I couldn't surf. You know, my mental health was at an all time low. And I think that, you know it's just hard to pick yourself out of that and then did you want to speak to people about it or because you mentioned that you bottled a lot of it up and then you you kind of eventually picked your moment to speak to your mum about it but did you want to speak to people about it but you felt as though you couldn't or what was that but yeah I mean I I did tell a few friends and they a couple were really supportive yeah and you know it's one of those simple cliche things isn't it it's like well if the only person that can actually change what's going on is myself so I, I felt like, you know, if I'm, I signed up for this counsellor, got tried to do a bit of that, and then I phoned a few really good friends, and then, you know, I just found myself slipping back into it and lying to people, mm. saying that I wasn't doing it, I'm, I'm fine, you know, and I'm, I'm not, and people could see that I wasn't, and it's like, I could, no one could help me, basically, mm. and it's just like, 
<laughs> and I thought, right, I need to make this decision to do it. So I decked my van out and put, built a bed and shit and then just drove to France. And then just thought, right, I'm going to get off the gear and, you know, get away from all this, you know, Croyd and all of the, you know, you know the scene of the North style, Devon yeah. and, you know, not have anyone around me that I know. And I know a few pros that are down there and stuff. And I kind of went down there and chilled with them for a bit. And that opened up my eyes a lot to a lot of things. And, you know, they, they were, like, really supportive and that. And, you know, I went down with Will Bailey as well one year. And it was just, we had so much fun. It made me feel fun again. I was surfing a lot again. And thought, actually, you know, and I sort of came back really, really positive. And then since then, I've had a few little blips and then moved back with mum and that. And then, <coughs> and then it sort of slowly just sort of started taking a turn to a point where, you know, I was just like, I'm actually feeling a lot better. And it, the turning point, I think, was when I got, oh, well, I got admitted back to hospital because my spine had gone again. And that's when the last two years ago that I was in hospital and I had an infection in my elbow and you know they didn't know what was going on with me at all because all my scans were like coming back okay and then like, I had brain scans and all sorts and I was just like what the fuck is going on basically but yeah I finally like went up to London and they basically said you know if, if you keep this neck tick going that there could be a chance that your spine swells up <coughs> so much and your spinal cord damage is irreversible they're saying which I don't believe, but they obviously know what they're talking about, but I've just proven to them that it isn't. And my whole arm came back, so that's not as strong as it was, but it will get there. So all the nerves and muscles are working in it, so that means that what I've been doing is good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, basically my left leg started getting better as well. And I think I've changed my diet to like a really plant-based fish. And, you know, I've done a lot of research myself and t taken a lot of CBD oil as well. So I think with all that combined, I think that, that I've changed my lifestyle completely. And it's, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't ever have beers and that, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But it's a balanced lifestyle now yeah. to- In moderation. Yeah, that I'm not depressed anymore. You're, you're making conscious, informed decisions that you want to have a beer because it's sociable, not because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's the- You want to There's nothing else to- Yeah, because, exactly. Yeah. Do you, um, have you found it difficult to, to speak to people and offload? And the reason I ask that is because, <laughs> I kind of class you as like an old school social media person because on your Facebook, every now and again, you'll, you'll come out with like a big status and you, you probably use social media the way in which it started and how it was yeah, invented. Right. Does he people... start with Steve is? <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? You know when people will just post shite on there or share yeah, things right. now and that's kind of well, what Facebook's no become. Yeah, but Play not even that. It's, it's not even an actual <laughs> personal status. I'm not going to send one of them to a girl you're talking to online. Uh, this is me and my dad on a pedalo in Mallorca. It's, it's yeah, just a, it's become like a sharing kind of yeah, thing right, where yeah. you, when you post, um, you tell, I've, like, I've read quite a lot of your posts over the last few years and some of them have been kind of like updates about your neck and where you're at and where you're yeah, at right, your yeah. health. I know you've had a few things to say about the COVID thing and you like to spark yeah. debates. But for me, and there's a lot of people that engage with your posts, so I can't help but notice and think, is that your way of actually you getting things off your mind and communicating? like through point, social yeah. media and Facebook rather than yeah, actually right. having conversations with people. Yeah, I guess that I'm obviously doing, like you said, like having followings and stuff and people reacting. Like I never post stuff for a reaction, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is something that, that, you know, a lot of my friends or a lot of people that know me probably think that I do. Yeah. But that's a fine line as well because I think that you can mix up social media with jealousy and people and yeah. all that side of things. I don't even care about all that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I post stuff about how I feel and about how, you know, I'm not seeking attention. I'm, you know, because I've got so many friends and people that know me because I've been in the public eye so much. Yeah. People tend to forget that. So I, and I'm a carpenter as well. So I, I go around people's houses. So I know everyone. Yeah. Not just like from old like old people to like, you know, everywhere I go and it's it's constant and it's quite hard. Yeah. So I get a lot of people come up to me all the time asking me this, asking me that, and it's like, cool. But it's also tiring because I'm just like saying the same thing over and again. So I think, yeah. right, I'm going to post it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then I got a reaction and it's like so positive and it does help. I think about the world. I feel like I've come at a point and I've had enough experiences to, to actually do it this time and actually smash it and get, get to where I want to get, you know, without 
all of this drama and crap around me that you know mostly I created myself just from you know my choices you know growing up and you know I've had a few girlfriends that didn't work out and you know which is all just part of life in it but you know the good thing about that is and that's another point is girls that I've been with have all been very understanding of Tourette's which is which is something that you know which makes me feel really good because it's it's been a massive anxiety of mine growing up is always been about like will I ever get birds or like will, will I will I will she ever let me finger her no, <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Is there something wrong? No. There's everything right. <laughs> My love. Is that one mine? Yeah, that's your bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Will she let me lick her nipples? <laughs> Probably not if you ask your mum again. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, but it is quite a fucking, you know, you're like, wow, this is this is a different world, and then you've got Tourette's in the mix, and everyone wants to be the cool guy at school, and I'm just there with curtains, just shouting, can, <laughs> can I finger you? They can, yeah, oh my God, she said, yeah. We definitely have to put a warning out, <laughs> and they're like the intro of this. I can't, uh, uh, not okay. suitable for... I can't, nah, I'd be right. So, music, did that stop when you spiralled then? Was that one yeah, of the right. things that you put down? Because I... Can you see? I I I used to play in a band, uh, played drums. Shit band. And, no, I'm joking. <laughs> average band. I can't lie. It was alright. Um, we weren't from around here. Um, but I love you. Say it back. And when that stopped, <laughs> I love you too. When that stopped, <laughs> is I, that why the relationships didn't really work? Say it back, say it back. Yeah, basically, full <laughs> speed and I really, um, <laughs> I, I really, <laughs> that really, really got me down. And I, it wasn't until I stopped doing it that I realised how much I loved doing it. And yeah, then, right. for years, tried to find other outlets and. Yeah couldn't and even now like and we we both do it like when we could go on road trips and stuff we'll belt out Adele in the car and stuff as a as a as an output and things <laughs> so I suppose two questions one fuck off nosy <laughs> <Sorry, God. laughs> yeah. one how was what was the impact on your music writing and stuff when you weren't very well mental health wise yeah, right and then two, what's the last year been like? Because it sounds like from the timelines, like you just got back into like, right, I feel music again and I'm going to be <laughs> yeah, I'm, right, I'm bang up for it. And then yeah. bang, music, as we know it, stops for over yeah. a year. Well, it, this is a, a good question because when I was going through my mental time, that's when I started getting productive with music. And I had a studio on Baggy Point where I was living in Croyd and it was a little bit too free it was kind of scary like I know the guy that owns it and it was a bit like you can do what you want sort of thing which is great but with me in my state and a few of my mates in their states as well it got a little bit naughty but it was good and some of the times I had there was insane like I wouldn't ever change it but you know the, what was great is that I had all my stuff set up and I could go in there whenever I wanted and we were night owls, so I'd only go in there at probably like five past nine or not. And then everyone else would be in bed. I'm like, fucking shut up. <laughs> but no, I'd do it quite quietly. But then a lot of people would go out and like, we used to have it to ourselves so much. And then, yeah, they, can I rip some, like, a couple of those two songs that I wrote in, in that room when I was at the lowest point? One's called Colours that I'm bringing out on an EP in, in about two months' time. Is it? Yeah, Colours, and then a song called Willow Tree. And those both I wrote, the song about colours is about me and my anxiety with Tourette's. And um, I put it on Facebook and got like a really good reaction to it. And it got like two, 2,000 views in like three days or something. And then that's what got me to a point where I was like, you know, people was like private messaging me saying that you need to bring that out. Like you need to get that, recorded and you need to do a music video with it because that's going to start your career mm -hmm. so I was like that for me was just like oh wow fuck what, what am I been doing and then I was like shit like I need to start so I basically like had a massive reset and and then um, and that's when it all started falling apart again unfortunately 
cunt, because then um, I got into another relationship again <laughs> with a cunt. <laughs> nah, she was lovely. But yeah, she... Uh, oh, don't tell her. Um, she's a cunt, she knows. Um, <laughs> and she... Um, I moved out of that place because we had to, because it all went to shit and electricity and water and all that. And then um, basically that that I had no studio and then all the stuff that I had done I couldn't do anything more with and then I was like okay right I'm gonna have a little break from that and then kind of moved in stayed in Croyd and moved in with my girlfriend at the time and then I sat my music up in our lounge a little bit now and again but then it was like winter so I was like kind of sitting around and then I was like working flat out on this job in Croyd and you know I was just like I will pick it up at some point I just mm -hmm. don't know when and where and then I was like, oh, what are we going to do? And then this flipping pandemic hit. And then I was like, fucking hell, cunt. And I was like, obviously quite scared because I was like, I'm never, obviously all of us, we've mm. never seen anything like this before. And it was inevitable that something like this probably would happen in life. So I was like, okay, I'll go with this. And then everything shut. And then me and her split up, which is quite a blow. And then I had to then move back in with my mum in Torrington. So I, I went from, you know, having a studio and living in Croyd, living the life, and then having a girlfriend, still living in Croyd, to having literally nothing. And I was just living in a place where I grew up and I don't get on with my, you know, my family, and my sister at all. And, you know, it wasn't a very comfortable place. And that's where I went rock bottom again, but not in, in a better way, in a way that I was controlled in myself and I was inspired to come out of it and do better. So... Yeah, I kind of started walking loads and getting my head out of my mental health was at an all time low again and I was just had sort of no way out. And then there was obviously no no music around, was there all that summer last summer there was no no gigs happening and I was just like, Oh, all the things that I want to do that I can't do. So like music, I had no way of setting up my music. I was putting it out on Facebook because I hadn't got any like lounge or any like space I could do it, and everyone was like, "No, no, it's nothing around." And obviously with COVID, you couldn't go anywhere, mm. so I was just stuck, like just going for long walks, just thinking about what I was going to do. And then we came out of that into that winter, and then my mum was in in the middle of you know selling a bit of land so we could move house and get get away from that house, and she could buy another house. And then um, basically this opportunity, you know, Jesse Davies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's a dog walker. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely girl, yeah. But I, she messaged me, said we, 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 got, we got somewhere. Like, so I was just like, oh my God. So basically I've, I've got this like studio space in, in, in Braunton Way and basically moved all my studio stuff from that old house because it was still in there because it's like a ruin, isn't it? I don't know if you know what I mean, that old house on Baggy. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's just a massive mansion that's just been run down. It's like derelict now. <laughs> but, no, I uh, throw a piss or a rave or something. Yeah, basically, we had a lot of raves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all, all my stuff was just in there. I mean, yeah. You couldn't take it because it was so big, it's like acoustic paneling. So I just moved it all to this, and built this new studio. And then, yeah, I've got a few new things and like and then I just basically got really inspired to come out of this pandemic and then I've now I've got somewhere to go so that's when I had another turning point and then in I think it was just at the end of last summer I think yeah a really good friend of mine actually committed suicide and um, a guy called Pete West and and yeah I'm like kind of best friends with his brother and that was a huge hit like for a lot of people and that that itself put a lot of stuff into perspective for me because that's how I felt but he did it and I saw the impact of what it had on the people around him and his friends and he was a local lad like a stunning looking guy like got all the birds had his whole life ahead of him is you know like he worked for Western Power he had a really good pay rise and he's, he owns a property and he, his life was made you know what I mean and mm -hmm. that's a prime example of someone that's got it made that didn't feel it and we knew him very well and it was like holy shit like, it affected everyone I know so much to a point where did anyone expect that at all <laughs> no was it completely like no so? his brother was the first person that I rang he, ra he rang me straight away and I knew that something was up and 
<coughs> sorry, you know, I knew something was up, and I was just like, you know, you, you're not, not something's not right, mate. You need, he said, I can't tell you, and I was like, well, mate, like whatever it is, like it's pretty bad. You can, I'll be there, you know, whatever. He's like, literally, I can't. I'm, I'm in intensive care. And when he said intensive care, I knew, I knew straight away that it was Pete. Basically, yeah, he, he, he basically killed himself, and he was like. They managed to resuscitate him at sea, and then yeah, he fucking yeah, it's it, it's just the most haunting, daunting thing. Like after all the year that even everyone's had, you know, just mm -hmm. to have a mate actually do it, and then to just just as I was coming out of how I felt, like I was coming into this like new world of music, and you know, I've got over my ex girlfriend, I'm, I'm pushing on, do you know what I mean? And then yeah. bang that happened and then we had a big memorial paddle and you know and we were just everyone was just I was lost again for like months just I still now like just you know I'm still grieving but like I feel you know I'm hanging out with his brother a lot and his family and you know that everyone's trying to support each other but it's, it was for me the biggest wake up call I think I've ever had I sit on this bench every day that they built my bench on Baggy Point I go and sit on it you know most days yeah and you know, to speak to him and just talk to him out loud about you know, and thank him for, you know, you know, listening to me. You know, because I talk to him and I feel like his presence is helping me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I thank him for just he's always been so lovely to me. Do you know what I mean? And he's always yeah. giving me good advice and you know, because I worry a lot. Mm -hmm. And he was a, him and his brother are the only two people that you know, not the only two, but like of my friends that you know encouraged me to just not give a fuck. Mm. about what people think and he was one of them yeah it's savage so and it opened my eyes up to how i felt and i think you know if you had done that steve you know what just devastation if you had left behind and yeah. you would have wasted all your talent all of your you know your hard work and getting through to rats you know and doing all this stuff and then it was just basically a massive eye-opener for me to you know completely sort my sort my life out basically and so I just started getting really fit and running a lot and, you know, sort of, I don't really hang out with anyone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just what I'd have to do to, you know, hang out with a couple of select people. Yeah. And then now I've just locked myself in my studio when my keyboard fucking works. <laughs> and then, but yeah, I'm starting to, I've learned how to use the software in that now, so I'm kind of actually producing my own album now, which is yeah. another thing, because like, I want it to sound a certain way. Do you need a drummer? <laughs> I do a lot of electronic stuff, but come yeah, if I ever did, yeah, yeah come in. Um, but that was a blow. Because yeah. you, you said about being the centre of attention. You say you do like being the centre of attention. I think, I think you like entertaining people. I think you like yeah, being right. an entertainer. But you don't strike me as someone that no. wants to make everything about them and things. Oh, definitely not. Do you <laughs> think? Do you think people are going to be surprised? It's like looking at you through the screen. Yeah, I know. We've kind of done it so the camera can see you, but I can't. Okay, it's cool. Um, do you think people are going to be surprised when they hear you talking about just how dark you okay. got and how close you got to thinking about? Um, I know you, you know. Let's get it. Let's get it right. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't get to the point of thinking I want to take my own life, but you probably started valuing staying alive a little okay. bit less. Yeah. Um, do you think people are going to be surprised at just how how well yeah, you got? Yeah, I think. I mean, a lot of people that knew me could see. For one, you know, I I got a lot a lot of comments on my weight, and I got a bit of a name for myself. And you know, I didn't go to the pub that much. People didn't see me. You know, when they saw me, I was very sketchy and a bit, you know, stand, you know, mm. like, didn't fit in. I wasn't myself because I'm always outgoing and very loud and. You know, I was always, but then I was the one in the corner, sort of like, oh, I need to go now. You know, I'd go out for a couple of pints and just shoot off, and then, you know, I'd go and, go and wreck myself to an oblivion. And, you know, I did a lot of it on my own. And the, mm. the times that I was low as I'd been, have been the times where I'm literally sat in my bedroom on my own, just ruining myself. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't mainly drink, it was just, you know, you know all the other shit. And, yeah, I mean, I. I always look back now and think, you know, it's, it, I do regret a lot, you know, of just oh, what would it have been like if I didn't do that? Would I be healthier? Would I? And then I just think, oh no, don't think like that, you know. Like I, I was in a dark place, and you know, I, I I didn't feel I had 
a lot of support because one, I, you know, I didn't tell my mum, I didn't tell anyone. I told a few mates, but they they also had a bit of a problem as well with it. And I found I found myself, you know, getting a bit of a label, mm. you know, and I, I was very associated with that, you know, that that when people fail and people have got talent and they do, it's like Andy Irons, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's when I watched that documentary, that woke me up a little bit as well, because the fact of like, you know, he was winning competitions off his face on everything. And I think a lot of it is, it's all mental. And it's all, you know, with the people around me that, you know, there wasn't really anyone around me. And I think the people that do know me, I mean, it's like my mum, I, I rang her up and I was just in a mess and she didn't have a clue. And I said, you got no idea what I'm about to tell you. I said it's like the worst thing in the world. I've got a really big problem, and I'm really low, and I need I need your help, and I'm, I need 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 you really bad. And she just couldn't understand why. Mm. She had no idea. Like, and I said, "What? You got no idea what what is wrong with me?" She's like, mm, "Friend's been horrible." I'm like, "No." It was like to do with me, you know. Like, I'm in a really dark place. I've been doing some bad things, and she's like, "Oh, you haven't hurt anyone if you." <laughs> I like, yeah, myself. <laughs> but yeah, she, you know, she was just like, had no idea. And I think that I talked to a couple of my friends about it and they knew. And I, I used to mess up a lot of jobs as well, you know, like I wouldn't come into work and, you know, I'd be late and I wouldn't do the best job. And, you know, I was just a mess, basically. So I think, I think a lot, of, probably a few people would be surprised, but I'm not ashamed of it because, you know, we've, I've come out of that. Do you know what I mean? And, you know. Do you, I, do you think more people that knew? of you and Pete, so people that are in that same circle, yeah, right. if they heard what you said tonight, which was that you know you were getting to that point, would yeah. they be surprised or would they be have some sort of insight as to they kind of maybe knew, but they, they you know, you never broached the subject, they did or you did sort of thing. What, yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, what you said there was that it's still very, very raw as to... <laughs> How family and friends yeah, right. are dealing with that, in, well, not instant, that kind of yeah, tragedy. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> I think while people are still kind of very observant and very kind of you know yeah, right. tuned into right. what's going Shut on up. to people, Sorry. do you th <laughs> do you think that people would be really surprised to hear you say that, or would they almost be a little bit like that kind of makes sense? I think it'd be kind of a, a half and half situation. Like, I think a lot of my friends knew that I was in a dark place. Like, and I don't know how dark, but, you know, I, I didn't really tell a lot of people I was feeling suicidal. And I think that, because I didn't know. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to start worrying people. And I always, because I already think that I'm a burden on people because of my Tourette's and because of this. And I always, I started losing a lot of confidence. Yeah. And I think that's where I started going into a point where I didn't want to be here anymore. Because I, I, I felt like people didn't want me around because mm. I was loud and I was annoying. And that was just my anxiety because I was doing too much Charlie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then I, I got into a, a, you know, a depression of like, I, I do have no confidence and I was Mr. Confident. Yeah. And then I think that that's when people started noticing that, you know, I was in a, in a, in a, you know, but the thing that I noticed the most is that I like, no one really did anything. Cause, mm. I mean, what can you do? I mean, it's like, you know, they're not going to go and tell my mum. A few people have said I'm, I'm worried about Steve or, you know, and there's, I've had times where I've just been up crying, you know, my mm. eyes out and just been like, oh, no one loves me. You know, it's just, but it's, it's real. You know, I had one of them recently at Christmas that, you know, that, you know, again, like, I was really, really low again. And, mm. you know, so this is all quite current still as well. And I feel since Christmas that I've pulled myself out of, you know, that's just a lot of mixed emotions about, you know, direction and pandemic. And like I said before, not being able to play music. Yeah. And, and I think everybody's been getting to a point of lowness this year, that even this year, you know, last year, but... You know, like it's not exactly the best start to the year, is it? No, you know, so it's, uh, it's been a leveller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paddy likes when I say the word leveller. He. <laughs> I say leveller a lot, and Paddy does this a lot. <laughs> I've um, consciously just kept my hands <laughs> like that. For this podcast, okay. um, you know when you, Me too. When, you know when you sort of, you, you've got yeah. over it, or you. <laughs> That's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Where you say you've got over it or you're better now, 
do you think that's the case? <laughs> or do you think you've just got more of an understanding of, of yourself and, yeah, right. and you cope with it a lot better? Like, you know that it, it might come back again, there might be another thing that happens in life that has the potential to yeah, right. send you down, but you kind of know how to deal with it next time? I think the, the main point in that is, is living in the present and, and, and having life experience to... It's like anything, isn't it? The more that you do, the more you learn, the more you know how to deal with stuff. And I think the same with Tourette's, it's like being in all these situations has helped me understand it. And I've been in some wrong situations, like, you know, mm. people, you know, holding me at knife point in, in, in foreign countries, like, you know, and chased to Morocco, like, you know, like bars and shit, do you know what I mean? Like, just, you know, because, but I still put myself in those positions and people don't. You know, I, I get more shit in Croy, to be honest, from tourists, like, you know, just from misunderstanding and, you know, the, and I think the best, it's, it's all about how you handle stuff in life, I think, like, it's, you know, it's like the situation with, with, with my mate Pete and, you know, and me and, you know, my, my friendship group, you know, and like, how things affect you and like, and then how it makes you realise that living in the present is basically like all you can do and it's all you should do because, if you knew how you were going to do deal with the situation, you wouldn't be learning. You know mm. what I mean? So I, I feel that, that I don't feel like I'm in the best place in my life at all, but I don't think anyone is. You know, I don't think you can be. I think that all you can do is understand that you're positive and you feel good. You want to be here. You live in the present. What you're doing is you're getting up and you, you're wanting to, to achieve. And I think if you haven't got a focus, and I think this is where a lot of people fall down, is that they they drink a lot and they were in the position that I was in mm. where you spiral out of control you've got no goal no focus you've got no help you don't talk you don't tell anyone and this is where you know everyone was saying to Pete you know you needed to talk you know he talked to me quite a lot and you know he, he talked to certain people and his his best mate said to me at the funeral he said it, it was a case of when he when he did it he would do it if it was 10 years down the line, five years down the line, you know, he said that he, he, he was always going to do it. And that was quite significant for me. I was just like, well, fuck, it's, it's the most mental thing to sort of process, process yeah. like how somebody was feeling that bad to, you know, and then cause I think there's a lot of people because his brother, you know, felt like that a few times, and, you know, and he's one of the best mates, you know what I mean? And I think, a lot of people do and they don't realise at some point in their lives they do feel suicidal and they do have these thoughts and it's about talking about about it, you know, and like when you've got these like ticks and all these mad things going on, you just got to accept them. And I think that I'd let them get the hold of me and then when someone was basically any situation's always heightened. I think it'd be really easy for someone with Tourette's to sort of make everything about that. Then I yeah, hear right. from you about the sort of the things with the mental health. I mean Tourette's has always been there and it's been a part of it and I guess it's kind of exaggerated <laughs> when things have been bad. But yeah. actually it's just normal shit that we that a lot of people yeah, go right. through. Yeah. And so I guess Yeah, I mean we started this podcast talking about Tourette's and it's quickly evaporated to just like you say, yeah. everyday shit. But yeah, it's, right. a, it's another you, podcast with someone that suffers with their mental health that happens to have Tourette's. Yeah, yeah. It's not someone that yeah. it's not about it. And yeah. I guess is there an, uh, you know, is it, it, it? It's so. Do you have an appreciation though of just how normal it is? I mean, you know, the, what happened with Pete and obviously Broughton itself. Like, there's going to be people that take issue with saying it's a little village. It's either a little town or a large village. <laughs> Like it's it's a big old village. It's actually the, the biggest village in the UK. Well, there's there's conjecture about that. Jake will be able to bring in now like a Wikipedia page about that. If it had a cathedral, um, it'd be a city. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But um, but but Broadland really suffered with because we've done a lot of work with it's the like Asper, with as for Jake as well. Yeah, right. Um, oh, yeah. And and so Sorry. there's there's that end of the sort of how serious things are. <laughs> I can yeah. But have you found since talking about mental health? that actually it's more common than you appreciate it and it's yeah. not just you that's sort of suffering with it. Have you got an appreciation of just how many people like did did what Pete did, did 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 that did that kind of bring together that friend group and more of you talked about and things that you were going through yeah, and it, definitely. You know, the conversation opened up a lot more? I think it you know, 
but the one thing his dad said is, you know, his, his big paddle that he did, you know, it's like it's anyone, you know, is feeling that way, just to please talk. You know, this is a guy that's just lost his son, his best friend, he surfed together every day, like, like, like Pete's a fucking absolute legend, he's a really well known, you know, person, and, and, and that was for me, like, that's what made me think, you know, like, fuck, you know, that, that could have been you, Steve, or it could have been one of your friends, or, you know, it could be another one of your friends, and it's like, that's like shit, man. We need to come together, and you know, people need to be there for each other because it is so important. Because I mean, the people that don't talk about it are usually the people that do it. But I think that I've known of people that have talked about it and done it. Do you know what I mean? And and it's kind of it's a fine line. Whichever way you look at mental health, and whichever way you look at anything, like the fact that you're feeling like that no matter how bad it is or how wrong it is or how right or how someone says, oh, no, he won't do it, he will do it, no, he won't, you know, none of that matters. The, the fact is that that person feels that way, they need help. Mm -hmm. And like, a lot of people can't ask for it. And I think that the, the only good thing about this pandemic, and I know it sounds bad, but not people that are dying, mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, is it's, it's, it's that people are waking up to certain areas of life yeah, that they've never even thought of before. And I think, you know, threats or not, or, you know, anyone with any problems, you know, like we've all, we've all got problems, you know, I just so happen to have Tourette's, you know, but I, I feel that when I'm at my best, I don't really have it. You know, when I'm the calmest or I'm traveling or I'm doing my thing and my life is, is great. It's, you know, I'm very calm, so. I'm just another normal person, another guy, with daily needs, daily struggles, with everything else, you know. But I embrace it. I can. I, I nearly let it get the better of me, you know. But I just think, how lucky am I here to be here, you know? And like one in a trillion chance, of, you know, finding the fucking egg. And it was me. Fuck's sake! Why did I fucking swim? Little cunt. But you know, we're, we're fucking blessed to be here. Do you know what I mean? And I think that you you have one life and you've got to live it well. Yeah. And I think the, the main thing as I get older is like, why has all my mates got houses and I haven't? Why haven't I met somebody that wants me? And it's because I know now, it's because, you know, I haven't been focused and successful in what I want to do. And I'm getting there with it now, and that's where it's kind but of... Also, having that house and that wife and those kids doesn't necessarily make you <laughs> yeah. where you think you should no, be okay, so no. it goes the other way as well yeah like, i we, we don't know each other too well we've run no. the same circle, social circles but home, home. i i got the house and the wife and the kids yeah. um and then 12 years later i now don't have the wife or competed on the same oh, wow. house last okay. week um Fuck. and it's kind of so wow. everyone's journey is different but i'm wow. just as upbeat about the next chapter and I'm yeah, not right. I'm not sad that Sorry. it sad that it's over I'm happy that it happened and um, <laughs> yeah. looking forward to what happens next I think everyone's got a different a different Spectrum, journey yeah. it's, like the, it's like the whole leg thing you're, you're one in a million and, yeah. and that, that kind of carries on I want to ask what is I don't know if you love them all I want to know the best and worst social incidents that have happened oh, like, because of Tourette's. There's, so been, many. there's been some great moments tonight that you've you got been like, that was... fucking pad? Well, no, I want, to, I want <laughs> to know. talking about a sheet. I want you to think hard. Fucking I want you to pad. give me, I want you to give me the number one best moment and and then the worst one. Oh, fuck me. There's so many. Um, oh, it's just so, it's so, this, this gets me a lot. It's a, a commonly asked question. I think for me that the most awkward and the, or, almost the most funny and what really fucking annoys me is that my girlfriend at the time wasn't actually like really paying attention but I'd gone round her house and I, I hadn't been round there before and this is fucking funny <laughs> um, and I, I went round her parents for dinner and obviously I've got Tourette's and you know she, she was beautiful this girl like, she's called her own yeah, she's lovely and um, yeah she, she took me round her parents house for dinner Probably shouldn't have named a name, maybe could edit that out. But I'm not ashamed of that. Mary. Yeah. Ian. <laughs> Ian? <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> I can't, yeah, so all sat on the dinner table and it all just went quiet. And I like, own them. Oh, stop saying I own them. <laughs> yeah, she was talking Ian. to Ian. 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 Ian was talking to her. Sounds like I own her. Fuck off! <laughs> so 
basically, she was talking to uh, another family member, and I just like, went, I'm fucking your daughter. <laughs> and it all just went quiet. And like, she was still talking, so she didn't actually hear. And then, like, the, the person she was talking to. I bet the dad did. The dad was sat opposite me. <laughs> and he's got a sense of humour, which was great. And he just looked up and said, Not in this house. You know. <laughs> <laughs>